Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's developmental agenda. On Sunday last, the Ministry of Agriculture collaborated with the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, to celebrate World Food Day at the Albion Sports Complex, Albion, Region 6. World Food Day was celebrated under the theme, Leave No One Behind, Better Production, Better Nutrition, a better environment and a better life. Delivering the keynote address, Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Musafa noted that World Food Day's theme is synonymous with the government's goal of achieving a one Guyana as no one will be left behind as the agriculture sector is transformed. The government of Guyana is working on creating the enabling environment for sustainable food systems, ensuring intergenerational equity and encouraging the strengthening of local food production and consumption. Championing food security and leaving no one behind requires development beyond the traditional agriculture. It requires different actions from the business as usual. 669 athletes from across the 10 administrative regions traveled to Georgetown to participate in Heritage Games 2022, which concluded on Sunday. Minister of Armenian Affairs Pauline Sukai told the Department of Public Information this year there were a number of athletes competing against each other. I understand that this is the largest number of athletes being gathered here um, in the city to compete among themselves. And so it has been a important, it is an important event. $50 million is expended annually for the Heritage Games by the government. The Central Housing and Planning Authority on Monday hosted a second round of consultation on the implementation of an automated single window system for planning and building permission system. Senior technical representatives of the key government agencies participated in the consultation session held at the Arthur Chung Conference Center, Lillian Dahl. Minister within the Ministry of Housing and Water, Suzanne Rodrigues, said the implementation of the single window system forms part of government's efforts to create a business-friendly environment and improve the ease of doing business. She said with the expected increase in development applications, there is an urgent need to introduce an automated process that streamlines workflow with the CHPA and other agencies. As a matter of fact, the increase in planning and construction permits is already upon us with an unprecedented 1,964 applications processed by the CHPA between the period October 2020 to September 2022. 1,798 of those applications were approved in full or in part, and 88 are directly related to the oil and gas industry. Dealing with construction permits, for the most part, involves the planning permission system whereby the CHPA is the principal agency with direct functional linkages with the local authorities and with the other regulatory and statutory bodies. Therefore, the CHPA is committed to taking the lead role to establish a single window system in dealing with planning and building permits. Additionally, some 600 residents of Region 6, East Burby's Quarantine, were allocated house lots in number 75 and number 76 villages, Kariviton, during the Housing and Water Ministry's Dream Realized exercise last weekend. A total of 400 persons received house lots at the exercise held at the University of Guyana's Tain campus two Fridays ago, while another 200 received theirs at the Burbies Expo held at the Albion Sports Complex. It's towards an overall target of at least 6,000 for region number six. So new housing areas offers not only house lots, but also an opportunity for our new housing developments, opportunity for commercial, industrial, social, health needs, religious, even education. Residents of Regions 1, 7, 8, and 9 will benefit from a boost in the delivery of health services 
as the Ministry of Health handed over a number of ATVs to the regional health officers on Monday. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony cited a loan from the World Bank that promoted an improved response to COVID-19. We also recognize in doing some of the assessments uh, across the country that apart from procuring equipment for the hospitals, that it was also essential that we were able to transport patients when they're sick uh, from one point to another, especially in the very remote areas. Continuing in healthcare, an agreement was also signed on Monday between the Ministry of Health, the Food and Agriculture Organization, and the World Bank to facilitate an updated performance of Veterinary Services PVS assessment as part of the One Health Agenda. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony stated that an integrated and cohesive approach is necessary to facilitate the proper delivery of health services. In a global world today, we have to consider the broader aspects of health, which include working with other sectors, working with other ministries, if we are going to have a full grasp, a more comprehensive um, view of delivering health. With this assessment, we'll have a clearer idea of some of the things that we need going forward over the next couple of years. And our objective is to help to implement this. Residents of Region 2, Pomeroon, Supernam, will see their lives being improved as government intends to push more investments in the region. Minister of Local Government and Regional Development, Nigel Darmlal, at an event held to commemorate a monument, made this disclosure. Minister Darmlal reminded that government's position on community development is very sincere. The ministry's engineers are currently opening bids for the construction of 123 community roads in the region. 261, my, if, if my memory serves me right, of community roads that are left to be done in this region. And I can tell you it is President Ali's commitment to get all of them done during the course of this first term. Some of the investments made already in the region are the U.S. $30 million hospital that is expected to be constructed to provide health care to Region 2 residents. Some $2 billion was set aside in the 2022 budget for the construction of call centers in Regions 2 and 6. As part of a collaborative effort to integrate women in the energy sector in Guyana, the Board of Industrial Training, BIT, through the Ministry of Labor, Ministry of Human Services and Social Security, the Guyana Energy Agency and the Inter-American Development Bank launched the Energy Matrix Diversification Program in Region 7. Delivering brief remarks, Chief Executive Officer of BIT, Richard Mon, stated that the main focus of the training is to ensure that women are able to participate in the energy sector just as their male counterparts. We are confident that you will be able to develop yourself the skills and competencies that are necessary to make you be able to use the knowledge, the information, and the skill acquired over the next uh, three weeks uh, to go out there and to earn from the skill acquired. At the end of the training, you're able to use the skill to benefit yourself, to benefit your family, and to benefit your community at large. Just about 42 women from Bartica, Region 7, are set to benefit from the EMDP which gears towards strengthening the energy department. This program is referred to as the solar installation training as well. The duration of the program will last for three weeks. The training will improve their productive use of energy and capacities in the developing solar energy subsector. The Ministry of Public Works, in collaboration with the Inter-American Development Bank on Tuesday, launched Resolve a digital notification software that provides real-time traffic alerts. Minister of Public Works Bishop Juan Edgel said that the tool will prove highly effective in keeping the public updated and informed. With this app and notifications that will come to your phone through WhatsApp and all the rest of it, every Guyanese will be able to get notifications in real time what is happening on the thoroughfare. They'll be able to make adjustments, alternative arrangements. Notif notifications will be able to come at a certain time ahead 
Vice President Dr. Barrett Jagdio this week met with fisher folk, farmers and youths of Region 2, Pomeroon to Panam. The VP was at the time spearheading the distribution of the $150,000 one-off cash grant in Region 2 to 706 fisher folk. We, we promised promise to restore, restore the children's, children's grant. grant. And, and so, so this, this year, many, many of you who are teachers and others know that every school child got $30,000. And then we said in five years, we're going to get $50,000 per child. We have about 200,000 children in school, both in private and public schools. Now they're, going to, they're getting that. That's over $6 billion alone this year that we put in the pockets of the children and the parents. First Lady Arya Ali at the simple handing over ceremony urged the brothers and sisters to continue being strong. She said she was prompted to render assistance after learning about their situation. I saw it fit in not only as a mom, but I want to grow up in a single parent home. And I know life can be very challenging and I'm sure Rashid is still facing a lot of challenges, but I know he is strong. The home was constructed after the family reached out to the office of the First Lady and with assistance from sponsors. The South Dakota Circuit, Guyana's premier home of motor racing, is being transformed into the number one racing circuit in the Caribbean. This project is expected to boost the country's tourism sector. In an effort to modernize, transform and diversify the economy, the Guyana Motor Racing and Sports Club has entered into a partnership with the government of Ghana through the Ministry of Finance to facilitate upgrades to the circuit. Senior Minister within the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, visited the site on Thursday. While historically we've been able to attract motor racers from elsewhere in the region, we want to make this a big, a major event. We want to build our own races day or races days, the key racing days of the calendar. We want to build, first of all, we want to be able to have world-class certifiable races in Guyana, which means whether it's uh, level three in the Formula One Association classification in the first instance, bringing the track up to a level that we can have internationally recognized races here, so that requires an upgrading of the infrastructure, but also building a whole calendar event around it. He noted the tremendous economic benefits that will derive once this is done. Dr. Singh also noted that it is the vision of the government to create an entire calendar of event-based tourism to promote a dynamic and diversified tourism product. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.